So good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, good one o'clock in the morning. I know we've got people from all over the world, which is fantastic. Switzerland, I just see. So thank you so much for joining us um, on our first um, webinar discussing how to start house sitting. And um, I am recording this, so we will send. I will send it out later uh, in the day. But um, first of all, I would just like to say thanks to all of you for coming uh, and joining us, but also introduce introduce our experts. I am no expert on house sitting, so I'm very happy to um, to have be joined by uh, by Kelly and Lamia, who are going to help us discuss this topic in detail. So. Shall we start by introducing ourselves? I'll go very quickly. I'm Deborah and I um, run Solo in Style and this is my Facebook group and um, I'm very interested to uh, to learn more this morning. So maybe if, um, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself. Um, okay, I'm Kelly hayes Rate. It's a pleasure to be here, Deborah. Thanks for organizing this today. And it's just lovely to see all of you from all over the world. This is so exciting. Um, I'm originally from Buffalo, New York. I lived in Los Angeles for 30 years, um, but the last 12 of those years, I was traveling full time as an international house sitter. Um, my, I, you know, I think people start doing solo travel after a major something in their lives, right? Deborah, you were talking about a sudden divorce. Um, right. You know, for me, I I was a political consultant and activist in California, and I had run for for political office, got my butt kicked and decided I needed to do something different. So as one does, I started house sitting all around the world and, uh, and it was wonderful. So I've house sat in 22 different countries, um, taken care of hundreds of dogs and cats and rabbits and had some extraordinary experiences. So um, I've recently relocated and settled down in Lisbon, very excited about a new life here, but I am continuing to house sit and I'm really looking forward to answering your questions and talking more about this extraordinary way to travel. Fantastic. And uh, Lamia, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so um, hi everybody. My name is Lamia Walker. Um, I run House Sit Match, which is a house sitting and pet sitting network. Um, we are one of the niche boutique companies, if you like. Um, and so we don't have thousands of opportunities, but we do have some very lovely select ones. And we're looking to grow post COVID and Brexit. How I came to this world is really quite by accident. Um, I used to house sit for friends of my parents um, when I was younger. Um, and then, you know, many years in the corporate world, traveling the world, juggling family, properties, pets, all of that nightmare with between au pairs and people stepping in and neighbors, friends and children. And I thought, oh, there has to be something easier, some better way to manage this. Um, and then one year, a friend of mine from Australia was visiting for a month. And she said, I've just been house sitting for a month in Perth. Um, and before that, I was house sitting for a year in Perth and I saved like a year's rent. And, you know, at that moment, the penny dropped and I thought, hmm, there's something in this. And so we started a little business together called House Sit Match. It just kind of gelled. We did a bit of research. There were a few other companies doing it, but we thought, wouldn't it be fun to travel this way, not just to save on rent? But we both had a deep passion for travel. I was born abroad and have always had kind of hankerings to go further and further. And so we started the little web business. She then went off to do other things in Perth and I stayed and it's just been a complete passion project ever since. And I love to share anything about house sitting and to share our opportunities so thank you Deborah for having me on the, on the talk today oh no not at all not at all so um so let's dive in so ladies who are joining us please if you've got any questions just pop them into the chat box and we will get to them and we did have lots of questions come in in the Facebook group as we were sort of advertising the session but I think an obvious place um so you mentioned uh, Lamia how you got started. Um, how did how did you get started? Was there something that kind of um, struck you first of all, or hit you? How did you kind of get your first house house sit? Yeah, I kind of fell into it. I had a cousin who uh, wanted to do some traveling and invited me to come and stay at her house and take care of her kitties while she was overseas. And uh, and then I I learned that there were some websites out there that that I could join. And that homeowners would join and homeowners would post their needs and I could post a profile of myself and my experiences. And, um, and that's how I ended up house sitting for strangers, which is a, right. a, a different kind of thing. So I often get asked, um, how does one get started house sitting? Right. 
Yeah. How do you, how do you break in? Yeah. And I always recommend to people that they start locally because it gives you an opportunity to, um, first of all, find out how comfortable you are with living in somebody else's home, living with somebody else's routine, living on top of their stuff. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Cause it's a, it takes house sitting isn't brain surgery, but it takes a certain kind of personality to do it. And I think the the women in your group, Deborah, have that kind of personality. They have the, the sense of adventure, the sense of curiosity, um, and all of those things that really make us um, successful travelers, right? Sense of humor, right. sense of flexibility, yes. um, a willingness to, to try new things in different ways. And, um, and that's all what house sitting requires. Um, I do want to say that the, when we're talking, when L Lamy and I are talking about house sitting, we're talking about uh, the free model because there are a couple of different ways that people house sit. Right. So, so this is, I, I pay my way to go to someone's home um, and they, they put me up, they pay for all of the, the living expenses, the housing expenses, except for my food and transportation and, right. you know, that kind of thing. Um, but I take care of their pets and their plants and their home um, at no cost. And, and it's a fair exchange. It's a, right. it's a barter exchange. So what the homeowner gets out of the situation is knowing that their pets are being loved to death, usually loved, yes. loved, loved, and that their homes are secure. Um, and uh, so, you know, I feel very welcomed when I go to people's homes because they really appreciate what I'm doing and that I've come all that way to, to take care of their, of everything that's dear to them. Um, the other model is a paid model which uh, many people do. They actually have their own businesses where they get paid to take care of the animals, walk the dogs, take care of the cats and so forth. They may or may not stay the night. Um, I, when I travel internationally, I don't do that because I don't want to deal with trying to get um, a work visa. I'd rather right. come on a tourist right. visa. Right. So, so that's the way I travel. Um, so I, I recommend that people start locally and, and it gives you just an opportunity to see um, what works for you and what doesn't work for you because it's just as important to know what doesn't work for you right right um, right you know so um and to if you can if start in your own country start with people you know some relatives or neighbors because that all reduces the number of new factors mm -hmm. while you're while you're getting your feet wet and trying to learn this um but you know there's nothing wrong if you're if you're bold and you want to go for it there's nothing wrong with jumping in on an international house sit my yeah. first overseas house sit was in London for six weeks during the Olympics. Yeah, it was. Now, is this is this where you met? Who did you meet when you were doing this as well? Was this a Bruce Bruce Springsteen? Oh no, that's a whole other oh, story. Something else. Something. <laughs> that's a, that's not a, that's not a house sitting story. But I will oh, be right. house sitting next week in London because <laughs> I have tickets to see Bruce Springsteen right. at Hyde Park. So right. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> Uh, that's a really good tip is it start local and I know um, Lamia one one question that I saw that you had answered in the group which comes up a lot which I had in my mind too was um, are there always animals involved do you always have um, a duty to not just look after the property but to look after animals as well well I would say that probably 90 percent of the house sitting opportunities are about the pets usually right. it's all about the pets the pets being cared for in their own home, keeping the routine. Often they're young or old, you know, they need care. Um, but we do get some choice opportunities where there are no pets and they can be the most surprising places. Um, so we've had some famous authors, you know, uh, changing properties and one property has to be empty and they feel vulnerable and they want someone trusted and checked to sit and just maintain the property until the property is sold or something happens with it. Um, you know, so and it, it's so you never know. You never know who you're going to be house sitting for, but it's um, it is mostly about the pets. Let's be honest, but that they that doesn't mean exclusively. So it's always worth looking and reading the profile, read the detail. And I mean, you just mentioned the term there. Something you know, it being checked and being safe. So both for the person doing the house sitting, but obviously the person who's opening up their home. Yes, you know, oh, right. and when I started House Sit Match, I, I came out of a professional services marketing background. So, you know, for me, the uh, identity checks, uh, maintaining protocols, establishing a, a routine that ev where everyone would feel safe, where you feel the community has been, you know, at a point of entry, everyone is identified and we know who is playing. Then it, for me, that's it, as somebody house sitting today, yeah. going through the Internet, that's important. And I felt that if it was important to me, it would be important to other people. 
Um, so we work with two um, companies who are professionals at this, who do nothing but check identities and right. check police and background information. But the police and background information is optional, but the identity check, which is in detail, is important, and that's required. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes absolute sense. I mean, obviously, safety when anyone's traveling, but particularly, I think, for solo. Uh, solo travelers, solo female travelers, it's a huge consideration. So I think it's obviously great to know that um, that, that there is there are definitely checks in place. And, and we check the homeowners as well as the house. Right. Let me let me be clear. This is oh, no, I you're vulnerable that, yeah. on both sides. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And um, so so how so how does it actually work? I I decide that I want to be a house sitter. Um, how does it work? I mean, I have not done this myself, but I'm hoping to. So I'm intrigued to know how does it work? I join up, first of all. To... Sure. Well, the, the steps are pretty easy. There's 50 different platforms out there that anybody right. can join. Um, I highly recommend Lamia's uh, platform, House It Match, because it really has some fantastic personal service. And especially for new house sitters, it's right. really important to, to join one of the smaller boutique platforms that has that kind of personal service. There are also uh, country specific platforms. There are several in Australia, there's one in Mexico. So there's some lifestyle platforms, but um, uh, you know, I, I like Lamia's because there's some really great house sits that are on there, particularly in Europe. So right. if anybody's interested in traveling in Europe, which is great. So the first step is to join one of the house, the house sitting platforms, uh, put up a profile, put up photos of yourself with pets, talk about your experiences with pets, what you bring to the table, why someone should choose you, um, as opposed to, you know, why you want to travel for free. That's not yeah. a good thing to yeah. put up, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, and then just really look at the the new offerings that come through. Uh, Lamia has a, a newsletter that she sends out, an e-newsletter that she sends out a couple times a week. You don't have to be a member to get that. So you can sign up for her e-newsletter and just get teased before yeah. you join, yeah. if you'd like. Dream. Yeah. And, right. And just see what's out there. Um, and then apply for the house sit. Apply as soon as you can. Um, I then what the homeowners do is they go through the number of applicants that they get and um, and contact you back. The messaging usually happens through the platform until you decide that you want to have a conversation. I always, always, always have a, a video conference, video call with the homeowners um, before I decide to do it. Right. I, I said always, always. There's been a few times when I haven't and I've regretted it. <laughs> right. Um, I think it's really important to get a feel for the homeowner, what their style of communication is like, you get a chance to see their home, you get a chance to ask questions about the pets, about the home, about the neighborhood, um, just everything that you can think of, of that you would need to know about living in someone else's home. Yeah. You have an opportunity to ask at that point. And they also have an opportunity to find out, um, you know, anything that they're curious about you. Right. So but before I do that, I, I I might apply for a house sit, but in the in the interim between the application and having a conversation, I do my own research to find out how much it's going to cost me to get there. So is this really going to be a viable thing for me? Um, do I want to spend that kind of money for going to someplace new that's four days? You know, then yeah. just so weighing all that. I look at the visa requirements. Um, I look at the um, the the medical entry requirements. I've house sat in uh, some places in Africa where I was required to have malaria meds or a yellow fever shot. So um, doing that kind of research ahead of time to make sure that it's going to work for you because yeah. it's a, it is a two-way street. You're providing a wonderful service to a homeowner, but you also want to have an opportunity to have the kind of experience you want right. to have. Right. Um, sure. So then after the, after the video chat and the agreement is made, I actually have a written agreement that I send to people that um, is, gosh, it's a seven page word document that has everything you can imagine about the house, the neighbors, the recycling, the animals routines, how often people want to be communicated with while they're away, um, all those kinds of things so that I can get all that in writing and have that at my fingertips during the house sit. And that's really- Oh, right. So you send that to them and ask them to complete that and send it. Oh, that's a great idea. Yes. So you've got, a, you've got one document that has everything in it for your reference. Yes, yes. Yeah. And some people already have house documents, but right. 
I ask them to take a look at mine and just, you know, supplement it. I mean, I have things on mine, like where's the nearest people hospital in case something happens to me. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Right. You know, exactly. Like, exactly. What, what would you think of it? I put my yeah. emergency contact information on there. So right. that if something happened to me, people would know how to reach right. my, you know, my family, my peeps. So um, it's, I find it, I find house sitting to be a safer way to travel. I feel more safe as a single woman. I'm going to be 62 next month. No, actually later this month. And uh, I just find it to be a safer way to travel right. because I'm in a home. Somebody knows who I am. They know yeah. who to they know you if there's a problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's just great. I'm yeah. not in a, in a dicey touristy area that no. attracts scammers and pickpockets, right? Right, I'm, right, yeah. right. Yeah. And, um, and so uh, Lamia, maybe for you, um, you we're, always, we're talking at the moment about um, it from somebody going to um, offer to house it, but obviously you're looking for people who have houses that and animals that need to be looked after as well. It's not just a one way street, right? Absolutely. No, we're, we're always on the lookout for homeowners, pet owners. Maybe they have a second property abroad and, you know, the, the housekeeper who would normally look in while they're away is, you know, unavailable, no longer available, whatever it happens to be. Or they keep pets yeah. abroad. You know, they may have a, a cat or two in their sun, summer home, wherever it happens to be. Maybe it's in Europe and they can only go for three months at a time now because of Brexit. There right. are all kinds of issues why people have a need for a house, a, a human being to be there and just take care of things, walk yeah. into their shoes and manage the situation. Um, it can be, you know, in the winter when the pipes are vulnerable because of cold weather or sudden bursts of whatever. So it, it could be all kinds of reasons why people need a house sitter. But it, it is usually about the pets. Um, I just want to supplement Kelly's point about the house document. We, we have a similar template and I couldn't advise more. I think it's the most important thing because actually it's the foundation of your agreement. Yeah, yeah. And it, it means you have I, you have identified some issues that are important to discuss. You know, this is a leaky tap or, you know, if the trip switch for the electricity should the light, you know, lights go is over here. All that stuff seems obvious to the homeowner, but it's not obvious to someone who's just walked into your home. So we have a document too that is a template that you can download and anyone can use it. So it's a very good idea. I completely support Kelly in that. Yeah. yeah. We, we also have um, a semi-legal and a legal version of a house sitting agreement. Now, house sitting, there are very few laws around this and it depends on the country. I know in Australia, certain um, regions have legal house sitting agreements. We have them on our site. But um, we have, a, a, like I said, an informal and a formal one for certain countries. So it's there if you want to use it. All right. That's good to know. See, I'm learning so much already. And everyone, um, we're, we're, everyone's very quiet. There are no questions coming into the chat. So we'll just kind of keep going. But if you do think of anything, please just pop it in there and we will get to it. Um, and so um, one question that I know came up um, in the group was, do I have to go on my own or can I take my spouse with me? Um, I suppose we could put spouse, friend, whatever, but um, how, what would you say to that? Um, well, I, if I could just jump in there, we have people who travel with their families. Right. We have um, found uh, house sitting opportunities for families of five and six. That's very rare, but they do happen. Um, sometimes the homeowners are happy because the pets will have entertainment. You know that there will be entertainment. Usually it is a couple. Often it is a single person, not always female. Sometimes we have retired men who like to travel this way. Yeah. We have writers who like to think outside of their own environment. And it means you can focus on what you have to focus on because... All you have to worry about is the pets and someone else's property. It's not like all the hot buttons you have at home. So we have singles and couples and families. Right. So, yeah, so that that kind of uh, I'm not sure if that person is on this particular call, but um, yeah, that, but I did. I did think about that myself, too, and think, um, would I if I signed up, did, do I have to go on my own? Even though we're, we're obviously talking about it from a solo perspective today. Uh, if I can jump in on that just real yeah. quickly. So, you know, I, I primarily house sit as a solo person, but I occasionally have had um, friends visit me while I'm house sitting because that's that's kind of fun. I just make sure I check it out with a homeowner ahead of time. Right. Yeah, you don't so, want to be having parties there and barbecues in the garden. Right. Well, I, I don't do parties and barbecues, but, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's, you know, it's nice to have, uh, like I'm, I'm doing a house sit um, next month 
for a week outside of Paris. And it's a four bedroom house. And I asked the, the couple if it was okay if I had a girlfriend come and stay for a few days, because that would be fun to do that. And they said, absolutely. Yeah. So it, it's, um, that's definitely possible to do. And people apply as teams. Right. So when you apply, so back to the sort of how do we do it, we apply. And then obviously, if it's a fabulous house, it's in a gorgeous part of the, the world, I guess there'll be lots of people who are applying for this. So how do we, it's a little bit chicken and egg in terms of get the experience if we haven't got the experience. So how, what tips can you give us please to kind of make us more appealing for these, uh, for these houses? Well, one of the things that about the smaller sites is that there's a lot less competition for each house, right. a lot less competition. So that's another reason why I recommend the smaller sites like house it match, because it's just, it's just easier to get started and get, get references. But um, Lamy, I think does house it match allow um, external references? Well, we allow you to share them in the application. You can attach various documents. So yes, there's always a way to share them. Okay, so if you have if you have references from friends and and relatives that you've house set for before, or character references, um, you know, I, I mean, we, we've all we've all applied for jobs. We've all done this at this stage in our lives. We've we've right. applied for something. So it's just a matter of making yourself look as um, as appealing as possible, right? right. And when you're offering a free service, but um, but I will say that uh, you know there's really not as much competition as you think. Because right. of the number of house sits that are out there. And so it's a place you, you know, it's a specific place to go to a specific period of time. So, um, and again, if, you know, if you're starting out, um, I always recommend that people look at the Christmas around the holiday time and around the summers when there are more house sits available, there are more house sits available and fewer sitters who want to right. travel right. during That's that period point. of time. Exactly. So there's less competition during those busy times, the high season times. Right. Um, um, if you look at shorter uh, house sits, so sometimes people are going away for a weekend and that might be fairly close to where you live. Um, and you can you can get some good experience that way. Right, right. And so do you, here's a thought, <clears throat> do you book your holiday to fit the house sit or do you book where you want to go and then look for a house or um, are they completely independent things anyway? Oh, I don't think they're independent at all. Personally, right. um, yeah. I book the house sit first um, and then I, I figure out what I want to do in terms of my travel. Oftentimes the homeowner wants me to come a day before so that they can show me the ropes and show me where they walk the dogs and how the appliances work and right. all of those kinds of things. And so that's that's actually a really wonderful thing to do because then I get a chance to really get to know the house, sitter, the homeowner, which is, right. I mean, I've made some fantastic friends right. this way and um, it's just great. So uh, I so I get the house at first and then I, I book my travel around that. And sometimes I might go a few days early and stay in a hotel just so that I can get a chance to see the area myself um, or I'll stay a little bit longer on my own. Right. Um, so the house sitting is uh, the house that the particular house at assignment is kind of an anchor for the trip, right. if you will. Right, yeah. right, right. And just on the practicalities of it all, are there any special insurances that we would need to get, Lummi, or maybe you you can talk us through sort of how that would work we would would we still need to take our own travel insurance but I guess in terms of any other insurances that's covered by the homeowner how would that all well we, we have a fairly simple model but we always recommend you take your own travel insurance and make sure you have whatever you need so if you need travel insurance for your electronic devices then do take it yeah. because you know what theft happens everywhere and you just need to be super careful um, in terms of uh, other insurances uh, we consulted with Aviva Insurance in the UK when we started House It Match, and they said that home insurance will cover most breakages and most incidents. However, not all. So don't guarantee, don't expect it, but it's worth having that conversation with a homeowner just to make sure that they, they are covered. It's also worth noting that as a homeowner, if in the UK certainly and in many countries through Europe, if your property is empty for 30 days without visit, yes. your insurance is invalid. Yes. And that is important to note. So that's another reason to have house sitters. Yes. Yes, I do know that, actually, just from personal experience. So it's a very good point. Yeah, yeah. really good point. Could I add one point to Kelly's conversation yes, earlier, do. which was a really Far good away. conversation? So in terms of travelling with a friend or a partner and so on, 
um, you know, there are houses, certainly on House It Match. I mean, I can tell you because I know I know most of the homeowners. I make it the point to get to know as many of the members as I can. So there's a house sit, for example, 10 minutes from the beach in Alicante. And the lady lives on her own. She rescues cats. She's currently got, um, I think, about 10 or 11 cats, but it's they're very easy care. Um, but she said, I've got three spare bedrooms, you know. So mm. whoever wants to come, they're welcome. And it's a very easy house to look after. It's modern. It's near the town. You know, so there's, there's a lot of information there. If you just have a look at the detail or even ask me or ask the owner, it's worth asking because you could travel with a friend just like Kelly. Yeah, yeah, and it could yeah. be a great two-week holiday house. Yeah, yeah, well, Lamia, yeah. you travel with your adult daughter, don't you? I do. Well, yes. And, and you know, with my husband, sometimes with my whole family, we've house sat in Cornwall, you know, looking after a, a, an adorable dog. Um, and it happened to be near my husband's relatives, which is why we took the, the house sit. So, yes, no, we, we it's it's just a great thing to do. It's fun. You know, that's a good point. Well, one of the things when I talk about house sitting is, you know, we talk about how it's a great way to travel uh, as a for a holiday. But I know many people who house sit just as you did, Lamia, uh, to visit relatives, um, mm -hmm. particularly their adult children, um, and their grandchildren. And it's a great way to, to be in that area without living underfoot. Right. Absolutely. Being underfoot in their home. Um, you know, when I go to visit my mother, I, I try to house sit because it's, we get along better that way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hear you. Yeah. yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of reasons, uh, when, where house sitting can come into play as a, as a way to kind of augment what your, what your travel goal is. Right. You know, and I want to back up. The first thing I do before I apply for a house sit is I think about what my travel goal is. Right. Do I want to be in a vibrant city where I'm out? sightseeing all the time, then I probably don't want a puppy that needs to be walked four times a day, right? Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if I'm looking, as, as Lamia said, if I'm a writer, if I'm looking for a quiet retreat kind of place, that puppy will get me, you know, away from my desk four times a day. And that's a positive thing. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I think, it, you know, it, looking at what your travel goal is, are you going to, to sightsee? Are you going as a retreat? Are you going to visit somebody in particular? Um, you know, that all, for me, that all comes into play before I apply for a house sit. Absolutely. That's a, a really good point because on the surface, we can all think, oh, how fabulous to just go and plonk ourselves in somebody else's house for a week. But there are responsibilities that come with it, of course. And, and they do then affect our time and our experience um, wherever we might be. So that's a really, really good point. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that, Kelly. We just got a um, question from Kerry. And she's asking that because there are lots of house sitting platforms, how do we know which ones are reputable? Well, of course, um, I'll let I'll let um, well, so, Lamu, you can, you've already mentioned why you founded House It Match and and some of the sort of key things um, that you offer in in your particular um, for your in your particular business. But would you like to just make some comment on that? Well, you know, if I was shopping around for anything, especially a service in my home. I would start looking online. I'd look to Google, see if there are any reviews. I'd look in Trustpilot, see if there are any reviews. Um, you know, any of those review platforms will give you an indication. They won't be the perfect solution, but it's worth reading them, not just looking at the rating. You know, what do people actually say? These are real people who have experienced whatever's going on. Um, so that's the first thing I'd do. I would also look and see what kind of checks, you know, what, what are the protocols on the site? Because not all sites have checking. Not all sites have reviews between members. Um, house it Match does have reviews, and those reviews have to be authentic, and they only apply to that house sit. You can't do a retrospective one. You, you can't cheat the system. So, you know, and, and I built it in a way so that I could vouch for any of the reviews on our site. So it's worth checking the protocols and just asking a few questions like that. But also ask your friends. You know, some people rave about the big sites because it's, there's lots of opportunities, and that's fabulous. Other people prefer um, perhaps a more supportive care, especially if you're starting out. And that's where perhaps where the smaller sites come in. But read, find out, research online, do some desk research first. But I think I've, that, that, oh, sorry, sorry. That's you, okay. I've, I've been a member, say, yeah, I've been, a, I've been a member of uh, five different, a paid member of five different sites. And um, for me, what I look at is customer service, because right. If you house it like you're doing anything, if you do it often enough, something's going to come up and you're going to need help. 
Um, I, I'm not going to mention the big site, but the big site has recently changed the way the model works, and they only accept five applicants per house sit, which means, you know, as a house sitter, it's much more difficult to get an application in to be able to apply. So to pay that kind of money and not be able to have the freedom to apply to as many house sits as I want is, I, I find that, I, I dropped my membership after 12 years. So, um, you know, that's one thing to look at too, is how much freedom do you have with being able to apply to different sits? Um, I like the smaller, as I've mentioned, I like the smaller platforms because the customer service is just so much better. Uh, Lamy is particularly known for her hands-on customer service help. But, it, but you know, Facebook is actually a great resource. There are several uh, Facebook groups out there. And one of them is called, um, uh, I think it's just called compare house sitting sites. Uh, it's one run by a, a woman in Australia named Robin Schultz. Uh, you can Google her. It's R O B Y N Schultz, and uh, and her site is really good. And she has a um, like a matrix up with all of the different house sitting platforms and what's offered and what's not offered. So that's a that's a really good resource. I I find um, there's another Facebook group I like called House Sitting Cafe. Um, which is an opportunity to just, you know, you don't have to be an active house sitter to join either of these Facebook groups. You can join and ask questions and see what see what people are chatting about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah and do your research. I mean, that's just kind of, um, and I think to uh, back to sort of um, my personal solo travel experiences, I've always wanted to move more towards a more boutique um, personal service than a big service. In my situation, I just feel a lot more comfortable with that and a lot more um, looked after and safer and more secure. Um, that's just, you know, knowing that there's somebody that I can turn to if by chance anything did, didn't quite work out. So I think that's a big plus. So um, just looking at my list of other questions, I don't know, thank you, Kerry, for that question. I don't know if anybody's got any others, but please, if anything springs to mind, do pop them into the chat box. Um, so let's kind of, I'm just, I'm so interested in personal experiences. And I know um, that Kelly, you have house sat all over the world and you too, love. I'm just really interested in sort of some of the best ones you've had. And actually, you know, let's be honest, if what can go wrong, because things can go wrong. Uh, and what do we, what do you do if anything goes wrong? Well, let me start with the what can go wrong. So um, I, you know, I, I like stop counting the number of house sits I had because it's, you know, there's so many of them, but it is 22 different countries. Uh, one of the hardest house sits I had was in um, Malawi in Africa uh, for a British woman who worked for an NGO. And um, it, and this was just heartbreaking. She needed to leave to come back to the UK for a wedding and her cat was dying. Oh. And so my job was to keep the cat alive until she came back. And it was, um, I, I didn't realize how stressful that was until I got to the airport and started crying. You know, it just, yeah. the release from that. So I was also, um, I'm going to get a little emotional about this. It was a really sweet cat. Um, it was an honor for me to take care of this cat and, and give her the peace of mind so that she could go and take care of her family obligation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, at a time that was so sensitive for her because she was very, very connected to this cat. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really quite an extraordinary experience. Um, so that's the bad, that's the hard stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, but I knew this walking in. I knew that right, I was taking right, care right. of a geriatric cat. I didn't know that the cat was dying right. when I made all the arrangements. But um, yeah. on the good side, I had um, a fantastic, I've had so many, so many fabulous experiences. My favorite, favorite, favorite thing about house sitting besides the pets is that I get to be dropped into somebody's life. So <laughs> I can ask them, you know, introduce me to one of your girlfriends, mm -hmm. introduce me to the neighbors. Mm -hmm. So I house sat in Réunion, and I know I'm butchering the French, I'm sorry. Uh, it's, a, it's a French island in the Indian Ocean that's just uh, east of Madagascar. I didn't even know where it was when I saw this house sit listing come up. I had to look it up on a map. And I was there for six weeks in, in, uh, just before lockdown. Um, the homeowner introduced me to her girlfriend, Anne. We became fast buddies. Anne arranged for me to be on um, a small Zodiac 
to be able to go out and snorkel with humpback whales that were migrating through. Now, this was so not a tourist thing. There is no way on God's green earth I would have ever found out about this because it was through a friend of a friend. And uh, I got to hump, I got to snorkel with a humpback mama and her calf. It was, wow. uh, you know, mind boggling. Right? Lifetime, once right. a lifetime, yeah. yeah. And it was because I had that was one of the things that I just asked in the video conference with the homeowner is, you know, do you have a couple of friends you could introduce me to? Yeah. And that made all the difference in oh, the yeah, world yeah, on this yeah, particular yeah. island. It was just an incredible experience. Lamia, do you have anything you want to share? You're nodding away there. I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's so hard to choose. Kelly, I don't know with all of your houses how you could possibly choose two stories. I'm going to squeeze three in if I can. So um, the tough ones start with that. I, I, I love getting lost in France. I love finding somewhere rural and just discovering, you know, with my feet and meeting people and just practicing my friend. I just love that. And so I found one such house, it's four dogs, lots of hens and a cockerel. Um, uh, seemed ideal and the lady was delightful English expat used to work at Euro Disney introduced me to her neighbours it was great fun but one of the dogs was a very recent rescue and it was in a gated property she had a few acres and it was very hard to get the dog in at night very hard and so the neighbours would hear me calling louder than the dog trying to get the dog in at night. and that was a bit stressful for the first few days until the dog got used to me and then came in and in fact the following year I went back and the dog burst out of the gate to come and meet me. So, you know, it was fine. Um, the, the easiest house sit that was really fun was cat sitting 25 yards from the beach. That was pretty nice. That was, you know, I did a lot, got lots of blogs written. So that was that was a really good house sit. And the owner was delightful. He'd recently been widowed. So he, the cat was very important to him and having companionship for the cat, care for the cat at home. That was important to him. So I felt I was, as Kelly said, fulfilling a service, but it was just a fun house sit. Yeah. And the most curious one I did just recently in Berkshire, UK. Oh, my God. This place was like a museum. It was a stunning estate. And the lady came from a very, very um, aristocratic lineage. And every room had a new set of museum items. And I would think, oh, my God, that's really interesting. How do they know this person? And then, oh, how do they know that person? You know, signed letters and portraits in the hall. I mean, it was just a fantastic, fantastic um, week and a half I spent there. So, you know, it's, um, it can be quite a, quite a discovery. So yeah, I've had some great, I've really had some good adventures. And I, 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 Gillian, you want to ask a question, I'll unmute you in a moment and, and you can fire away, but just to comment on that, my, what I'm hearing from both of your experiences is just how unique each one tends to be and how very different it tends to be to perhaps just having an Airbnb somewhere or just having a, a hotel room somewhere, you just get under the skin a bit a bit more and you just have a much more um, local and a much more sort of real experience, which I think is, I think personally for me as a traveler, I really, really look for that and enjoy that. Let me see if I can unmute you, Gillian, and you can ask your question. I'm asking you to unmute. Um, Hello. Oh, there she is. Hello, hi. Uh, I, come, I live in Australia and I have been house sitting for the last 10 months, pretty much full time. And I absolutely love it. I just kind of fell into it. It's kind of just happened that way that my life, I say to people, I'm uh, houseless, not homeless. So the, my question is, I live in Australia and I've only been house sitting within Australia so I can drive around in my car and take my belongings that I need with me. But I would love to be brave enough to travel overseas. And of course, I can't take a vehicle overseas. And so I just wondered how you've managed to travel overseas, not in your home country and done house sits. How have you managed to get around or get to the house sit and buy your food? And like, I don't mind staying there, but you know, you've got to feed yourself and you know, maybe take the pets out, you know, so it, can you answer either of you that question? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. You're going to start, Lamia? No, no, you go for it. Okay, so um, I'm a city girl. <clears throat> I love to go to museums and the theater and dance and that kind of thing. So I tend to choose house sits that are in cities with great public transportation. So one of the things that I asked during the video interview, because that is important to me, is how close they are to public transportation. 
Um, and I would prefer not to drive in a city. So um, being able to, to do that. I ask how close the, the nearest grocery store is um, yeah. and you know and those kinds mm -hmm. of things. So that I know that I can fulfill my, my daily living needs in that way. Um, at times when I've had uh, more rural sits, like the one in Malawi, where I had to take the cat back and forth to the vet, um, or the one in Réunion, which was, there really isn't a public transportation system there. Uh, the homeowners gave me their cars. So, yes. and they covered, they covered the insurance for that. Um, so, and that was, that was helpful because then I could take, uh, you know, I could take the dogs out to walk in Réunion. I could take the cat to the vet and so forth and, and get to the grocery store. So that's, that's what I did there. Um, in terms of getting from the airport, if I'm going to a country that is really foreign to me, um, for example, I've house sat in Japan and China and Vietnam. I ask the homeowners to uh, arrange for a taxi for me. Um, a lot of expat homeowners who live in those kinds of places have their own driver. Um, it's not their own personal yep. chauffeur, but it's a regular drive, a taxi driver that they call. Um, and I ask them to arrange for uh, the, the airport pickup and to pay for that. And, um, and although house sitting is a, is a no cost and no money exchange, I feel like that's not a, an unusual thing to ask for. And then I pay for my way back to the, to the airport afterwards. But by then I've got the person's, the driver's name and number. So. Yes. Thank you. Sure. Very much. Yeah. That answers a lot of questions. Thank, Thank you, you, Gillian. Let's hope that you uh, let's hope that you um, venture out of Australia. Lots of us over here would like to come and house it where you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought maybe starting with New Zealand might be a good way to start because it's not far from home, and I'd love to travel around New Zealand. So. Yeah. And I'm on Aussie house sitters here in Australia, which is very popular here in Australia and very easy to get house sits. So, mm -hmm. so uh, I'll be definitely following that. So I'll, I'll keep you, you updated. Thank you for your question. Um, You're welcome. Is there anybody else who would like to ask anything you can ask or just pop it into the, um, into the, co into the comment box? Everyone's fairly quiet. So, um, <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I feel as though we've kind of covered lots of things here. So why don't we, as we're kind of coming up to... There is a question, Deborah. Oh, there is. Judith, sorry, I missed that one. Oh, there you go, about cleanliness. Have you ever taken, have you ever gotten to a house? I think this came up in the group. Somebody was talking about the fact that they turned up at a house sit and it wasn't very clean. Were you on that thread, Kelly? I think you might have been. I yes, can't yeah. yeah. There's there's been a couple of times, not often, but a couple of times where I've walked into a house and just sat down and cried. And you know, it's 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 just really hard. You know, people have different levels of of cleanliness. Um, so one of the things, this is a really great insider tip. I've got this tip in my book. When you're on the video uh, call, look to see how cluttered the house is. Look to see how cluttered the kitchen is. If the kitchen counter is just like filled with appliances, chances are those appliances don't get moved every three days to get cleaned under. So, so if you, the, the amount of clutter and the amount of clutter in the bathroom um, mm. can be a good indication. I look at the photos. I'm appalled at some of the photos that people put up of their home, you know, with, with dirty laundry all over the floor. They put that up as a as a photo advertising their home. So those to me are kind of giveaways that these are probably not what the Brits call house proud people. Um, on the other hand, if I'm going someplace for a week or two weeks or three weeks and I, and I need to spend a few hours, half a day, the first day I get there, cleaning the house to a point to make me feel comfortable, I'm like, okay, that's just a thing to do. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. So um, I tend to clean. Uh, at, I mean, no matter where I am and how clean the house is, I tend to live in just small areas. So I don't necessarily live in the entire house. I live in a little part in the living room, a little part in the kitchen, and I live in the bedroom, the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So uh, if the house is not that clean, I just clean those areas and kind of leave it at that. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of the house sits that I have come with housekeepers. All right. So, you know, it works both ways. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, what can you do about that? I mean, Lamia, maybe this is for you. I mean, 
it's a are you legally bound once you have said you are taking this house if, if you turned up and you just thought oh my goodness this is absolutely not what I imagined can you just walk away or I mean well in in the nine years I've been running this I've had probably two instances where the, the house sitter has said you know what this just isn't for me right um and what we do is um, as Kelly said people have different standards different values um, you know, and then it's it, for whatever reason, it could be that, you know what, this pet is really ill. I, I, I'm not qualified to care for this pet or um, or there's just too many pets. They didn't say there were these three other cats. Mm -hmm. So it, it depends. I, my advice is preempt this. Get to know them as well as you can. Talk to them, not just once. Try and have a couple of conversations and ask all those questions ahead of time. Questions about the welfare, how the pets are managed, how the cleaning, you know, do you have a cleaner? Do you have a housekeeper? Um, I, I've done a house sit, which, you know, on the surface was great. And there were lots of pets. Um, but to be honest, I, the person was so delightful and the pets were so adorable. I just went and bought some cleaning products and just spent half a day cleaning. Because, you know what, and she came back and she... She was stunned. She said, oh, this is fantastic. She realized. And so sometimes people just don't realize, you know, you live in your space. Um, so I, it, for me, it, it doesn't matter. I just go ahead and clean because it makes me happier. And you know what? It tends to make the homeowner happier too. But often it is there is a cleaner who comes in once, twice a week. You yeah, know, you yeah. almost don't have to touch anything. They prefer you not to sometimes. Right. I know, yes. It's Jill's right. job or whatever it happens to yeah. be, you know. Yeah. So and as a gardener or whatever, you know, so it's, I just have to look after the pot plants. It, de it depends, but you have to get to know the homeowner, talk to them as often as you can, just get the feel for it. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, that's really great advice, isn't it? It's, it's like anything, know what you're going into as best you can so that you're as, as well prepared as you can possibly be. And there are no, no shocks. Yeah, thank you. But, but that's true of any kind of travel, right? Right, exactly. I mean, you can end up in a hotel that doesn't look anything like the photographs or an Airbnb that doesn't have, look anything like the photographs. And yeah, exactly. And um, you can spend time, you know, cleaning the loo or whatever. Yeah. I, I can honestly <laughs> say that I've stayed in homes that are so well maintained that, you know, it's it's been, it, I've left and come home <laughs> Oh my God, look at the house, you know. So <laughs> it's it works the other way, you know. There are some people who are intensely house proud and so happy to have someone appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, it works yeah. both ways. Yeah. The Gillian makes a good point about them leaving enough room in the fridge and freezer for the for your own food. It's a good thing to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that, Gillian. Ba bathroom too. Yes. Well, I suppose it would depend on your living arrangements, wouldn't it? If you were sh sharing the family bathroom or if you happen to be somewhere with, an, uh, with your own bathroom, yeah. I mean, you are living in other people's space and I think it does require some different thought process. You're not just in a hotel room where, you know, it's or, or a, a rented apartment. So, yeah, it is very different. This is brilliant. Thank you. I mean, I feel like um, we've covered a lot of ground. I don't know if there's any more questions. Um, what I will say now, uh, we're coming, as we're coming to the end, I will um, send out the recording of our session to everybody. Uh, so thank and thank you for being here. But also um, two small plugs for, um, and obviously, as you can tell, Kelly is a very um, experienced house sitter and has a book that she has written that is available, which was in the photograph that we used anyway on the, um, oh, you need to put it down a little bit. So Oops, sorry. So move it away a little bit. How to become a house sitter, insider tips. And I think that's available on Amazon, right? It is. It's available on Amazon, there Kindle or regular book. Yeah. Thank and I'm sure that. you'll find so much more in there. And I think that also we are going to do more of these sessions, aren't we? We're going to kind of get into some more detailed sessions and, and look at sort of particular angles. And, and um, because this was a very much sort of how do you get started? But um, but also, Lamia, you are very kindly offering a great promotion to members of our group. Um, and I'll put the link in the chat now. But um for anybody who wants to join, you're offering a 25% discount on the on the first year's membership. And I'll just share that link now. And I will share that um, in the in the email that I send. But um, yeah, I mean that's great for people who want to join up. They can do that. 
Great. That's a great offer. Yeah. And yeah. if you use that link and you use the code SOLO25, you'll get 25% off. Um, and then that's it. I mean, you're all set to start to start um, house sitting. Um, and I have joined. And one thing that I really like, Lamia, is that you send out regular communications to me. Um, you know, I'm getting lots of tips and blogs and helpful hints and have you thought of this and um, you know, all of that. So um you cover, you know, so many, so, so much. I feel like I'm part of a, a group. I haven't just signed up for an anonymous service. Well, we, we love to hear the house sitter stories and the homeowner stories. So we're always recruiting our new members to share their house sitting tales, their photographs. You know, we publish blogs. Um, it's, it's, um, I think it just helps people understand what's possible. Um, Gillian, you have a question. Are you only in the UK? We started in the UK. We have house sits in Spain and France, across Europe. We have some in the States. Um, we were hit quite badly during COVID, but we're growing again. We do have homeowners in Australia and New Zealand, but they've been very quiet. So um, I would sign up for the newsletter for sure. It's free, and then you'll get to see what's coming up, what's being featured. But we do have some lovely house sits. And if you have questions, feel free to ask me about the house sit, because I may have been there. <laughs> So, and this, I feel this lovely personal kind of, and I am a member of a, becoming a member of a really kind of lovely group, uh, supportive and informative, and um, I'm desperate to, to dip my toe in for my first <laughs> for my first house. So I'm going to start looking at that. Uh, now that I know a little bit more, but um, thank you so much. Um, I don't know if there are any other last minute questions. If anybody wants to quickly pop anything in. Lots of ladies saying thank you. We're saying thank you to you for, for joining us um, from wherever you are. Um, and as I say, the recording will go out and um, I'll share the link again with the promotion in case you want to join. And um, I'll also mention your book, um, Kelly, because I'm sure people will want to have a look at that because that will have lots of great information in it. So um, I think that's it. Thank you very much, everybody. And um, happy house sitting. And um, look forward to reading about some more everyone's stories, either via your blogs and your um, your group, uh, Lamia, or in or in the Solo and Style Facebook group. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Bye you. everybody. Thank you. Bye everyone.